Am I on? Can you hear me? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lighthouse Church. Are you feeling the Christmassy feel? <laughs> Praise. There you go. Praise God. Well done. All right. So we have so many seats unoccupied here. Um, so I, I'm not sure if I'm going to just look in this direction or this direction. But if you could just like, well, not too close to each other. But uh, anyway, if you could just like move a bit here so you don't feel like I'm just talking to these people and not to your side. <laughs> you know, I always say that I am relational when I am preaching. All right. So my name is Jed. And um, I am uh, one of the elders here in the Lighthouse Church. And I am so happy, extremely happy to be seeing old faces and new faces today. Yes. And um, today, I am so thrilled to start the series, A Reason to Celebrate. Because we, can somebody tell me how many days before Christmas? 20? 20 days. Wow, that is so fast. So, a reason to celebrate, and having said that, we have so many reasons, yeah, to celebrate the joy-filled life in the Lord. And it is a choice that we have to make every single day, okay? Your joy doesn't depend on the people around you, not, you know, to the environment, you know, you're surrounded, but it's always depend, Okay? in what Jesus has given you. And to begin with, um, December is a good reminder to be truly grateful for the real reason for the season. Okay? The real reason. Why do we celebrate Christmas? And the most, and you know, Christmas, they said, this is the most wonderful time of the year and everybody's looking forward for December. It brings us back to, you know, to the original story of Christmas. And it compels us to remember, okay, why do we celebrate it? And today, are you ready? Ready? All right, so I just want you to give, you know, your seatmate a, um, uh, what do you call this one? Elbow bump. All right, say, get ready. <laughs> All right, so let's just, let's just uh, start with a prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that today, God, we celebrate you. We celebrate your birth. We celebrate your goodness. And we just want to thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are in the midst of us. Lord, teach us. Teach me. Speak through me so I can deliver the message of the King to his citizens. In Jesus' name I declare. Amen. All right. So before I start, we, I'm going to give you a little short quiz, okay? A short quiz. And let's see how many of you are reading your Bible or how you are well familiar with the Christmas story. I think I forgot my click, click on the, on the, on the chair. <laughs> yeah, I know I said I'm missing something. There you go. Okay, let's begin. Mm. So I put numbers one, two, three, four. If your answer is one, you just raise your, you know, one finger, two fingers, three, and four. I'm just going to look around. Don't worry if your answer is not correct, okay? There's no condemnation. <laughs> I'm not going to condemn you, okay? Number one, eyes on the board, please. On the board, okay. I feel like I'm in the classroom. Eyes on the screens, please. Which Old Testament prophet had the most to say about the birth of Christ? Jeremiah, Isaiah, Zechariah, or Elijah? Show me your fingers, please. Somebody, two, 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 four. All right. The answer is... Two, it's Isaiah, yeah. So most of the uh, prophecy about Christ can be found in the book of Isaiah. Let's go to number two. Right, who was the virgin who gave birth to a son that was prophesied by Isaiah? Mar Mary, Marian, Maria, or Martha? Show me your fingers, please. One, two, three, four. Yeah, well done, you clever people. Yes, you should know her. Mary, super. <laughs> oh, number three. Right, what does Emmanuel mean? God is holy, 
God is powerful, God is with us, or God is love? Okay, ini mini mini mo. If you don't know the answer, just ini mini mini mo. All right. They said three, they said two. All right, the answer is number three. God is with us. Well done. Number four. Do Emmanuel and Emmanuel have the same meaning? Yes, uh, no, yes, maybe, or all of the above. Fingers? One by four. Somebody said four. This is a very tricky question, isn't it? Four, three, one. The answer is two. Nobody got it right. Yes. It's just the spelling that are not the same, but they have the same meaning. I will, uh, I will, yeah, right. Emmanuel with the I is a Greek translation for God with us. The Emmanuel with letter E at the beginning, this is the translation of a translation, meaning translated from Hebrew to Greek, then to English, okay? So there's no difference in there. Number five. Who is Emmanuel or Emmanuel? See, I put them together, referring to Joseph, Jude, Isaiah, or none of the above. Oh, you should know the answer. Of course, none of the above because the answer is Jesus. Okay. He would be called Emmanuel means Jesus is God. And he dwelt among us in his incarnation and that he is always with us always with me can you say that to yourself always with me mm. and the last question right i'm gonna wreck your brain now when was the prophecy of isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 fulfilled in four before christ in december when jesus resurrected to heaven when jesus was conceived or when jesus was born when the prophecy was fulfilled, which of this event do you think is the answer? Number one, before Christ in December? Oh, you need to show me your fingers. Oh, no. Right. Four, 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 three. Oh, some of you did it right. Some of you did it wrong. The answer is number four. When Jesus was born. You know? Mary could have conceived her and, you know, miscarriage. So it was not the fulfillment. The fulfillment was when he was born, right? You see the baby. You see the baby and you hold her or you hold him in your arms. All right. So with all this question, obviously, my topic for today is about Emmanuel, which means God with us, okay? God is with us. So again... Uh, when I flash back the, the screen, it says there that Emmanuel is a Hebrew word meaning God with us. Or, with us is God. Among us is God. God is present in us through the person of Jesus. It wasn't the question. Jesus was God in the flesh, meaning 100% human being and 100% human God. There's no partiality. 100% both. And Jesus, when he was here on earth, Jesus was God dwelling among us, okay? Dwelling in him. Emmanuel is not just a name, right? It's just a name. It is a promise. Please remember that. When we say Jesus is Emmanuel, that is not his name. That is his description, and that is the promise of God. Jesus, as our, you know, Emmanuel, is omnipotence. You know what omnipotence is? Meaning? All-powerful. Omniscience. What is that? All-knowing. Omnipresent. He's everywhere. Whether you go up or you go down, God is there. He knows. And it is also an epitome of perfection. Jesus is perfect. Okay? Nothing is flawless. Everything is perfect. And that the love that he has for us never fails. And the most important thing, Jesus as Emmanuel is with us. Can you say that again to yourself? With me. Jesus is with me. So now let's go to our question. Okay, this is the one.
Go. Before I go to the question, let's just read our verse for today. That's in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. We're just going to focus on this verse. And it says there, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So, my question is, there we go. There we go. Let's go to the question. I have two questions for you to ponder and before you go home or maybe when you arrive home, I want you to just ask yourself, you know, ask yourselves these questions. Number one, how do we reconcile the hopeful theme of Christmas with the desolate year that we have had? So how are you going to mediate? How are you going to say that? How are you going to um, like equal or meet the theme of Christmas that Christmas is full of hope? With two years that we have been experiencing the COVID-19, do you still have hope? Do you? And question number two, what comforts you and who gives you hope in hard times, especially this Christmas season? Okay, because we're talking about Christ. I mean, what, what, what comforts you? What helps you? What supports you? That's my question. So, let's just do a little bit of um, uh, dissecting here, okay? For me, for me, this is my own opinion. This is not from the Bible. <laughs> for me, the way you celebrate Christmas, okay, and the way you handle your circumstances reveal to me your perception, your understanding of who Jesus is in your life. Christmas, for some people, could be the most exciting and the most, you know, look forward event of the year. I mean, for some people, okay, maybe some of you here. Why? Because they like, you know, giving and receiving presents, drinking, partying, merrymaking, you know, people on the streets. And for us Filipinos, we love receiving bonuses. Do you like bonus? <laughs> and when you get your bonus, you just, you know, do crazy shoppings. And by the end of Christmas, you are all broke. <laughs> we are all broke because all your money gone with your, you know, in your shopping things. Mm. But for others, maybe half of this, you know, half of the people here. Maybe for you, Christmas is a perfect time for meeting friends and families for reunions. Do you agree with me? I mean, they wait for December. I want to go home in December, Jed, because I want to see my family. I want to, you know, spend time with my friends because it's Christmas. And also for other people, they want Christmas because this is the time for forgiveness. No, I'm not going to forgive my mom, my brother, my sister until it's December. So they will wait for December because they thought that it's the perfect time Okay? To release forgiveness and to mend uh, broken relationships. But sadly, okay, for others, Christmas is the saddest. Okay? I'm not sure if we have people here in the room that when December comes, you think that December or Christmas is the saddest, the loneliest, the most depressing, most stressful, most expensive season of the year. So when they think of Christmas, these are the things that, you know, come into their minds. So what do you do when people around you are having great joy and happiness while you, or maybe you watching me right now, while you are crying in your own little room because you've got no friends or families to spend Christmas with? What do you do when you are fighting for your sickness or battling over COVID-19? What do you do if you go home to, you know, if you want to go home to your country, go home to the, go home to the Philippines, to USA, to America, whatever part of the world, if you want to go home, but because of financial constraints or travel bonds, you just can't. What do you do? when you still have no jobs and bills and payments are on their way, knocking at your door, payment time. What do you do if you are the wealthiest person in the whole wide world, 
but you couldn't afford, you couldn't buy the comfort and the presence of your friends on Christmas. What do you do when all you, you know, when all you need is just a simple comfort, but nobody there to give that to you? What do you do? Or who do you call for help and comfort? That's my question. Who do you call? Those questions that I just, you know, threw on you, threw to you, some of them are good, some of them are bad, but, okay, let's just break them. There's a good news, okay? Let's go to the good news. God, who is sovereign, okay, loving, great in mercy, and faithful, you know what he did? He invented the greatest solution to the need of mankind. Okay? And everything about Christmas, everything about Christmas was initiated by God. Okay? He did. Because God did not create Christmas so others can be happy, half of this room will be happy, and half of the room will be miserable. No, that's not the purpose of Christmas. Okay? Christmas or Christmas was His absolute answer to the greatest need of man because Christmas is the fulfillment of his promise okay that God being with us and no matter what you're going through okay you no matter what you're going through right now you've got no job you're sick you have broken relationships um, you've got problems with your children you've got problems with your with your business you know no matter what you're going through right now God is always there for you. Emmanuel, He is with you. He is there when you need Him. You remember um, Brother Peter preached last week? I am who I am because God is there when you need Him. What you need Him for? Where you need Him because God is with you. So name whatever need you need, okay? And God will show himself and will, he will reveal himself to you as who he is because he is the answer to whatever you're looking for. Amen? So now, you're all quiet. <laughs> right, so now let's just go to the four S, okay? I made here, I put four S as the... Um, the promise fulfilled by God in Christmas, okay? So when Jesus Christ was born, so when Jesus Christ was born, God gave us four S to fulfill His promise of a Savior, an Emmanuel to comfort us. So let's go on the first S. That it says there on the screen is God gave us a sign, okay? I'm going to do a little bit of background here. In Isaiah 7, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, it says there, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Okay? When you say sign, in Hebrew, it means a signal, a mark, a token, or in a simple way, you can say that a sign is a, a miracle. So when we replace that, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a miraculous token, a miraculous mark, a miraculous signal. So in the Old Testament, okay, the Old Testament prophecies of Jesus, they are like road signs. Are, you, are most of us here driving? Even if you're not driving, you always see signs, all right? Left, right, or whatever sign you see, it does mean that something is coming down the road. Whether if you drive north and you see a sign of a city or a sign of a restaurant, it promises that something is coming down on the road. So, why are you telling me, Jed? What, what, what is that sign about? So, let's just go to Matthew. Okay, I think. Let's go there. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, so you can really understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, it says there, Behold, a virgin shall be with 
child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us so let's go back a little to the history so we can better understand the text in the context of Matthew 1 23 why did Matthew say that all right I put the story of King Ahaz here okay when you look at the book of Isaiah allow me to read this and you can read this with me so you can follow through okay so Isaiah is speaking to the king of Judah. So this is in the book of Isaiah, right? This is, the, uh, this is where the sign, you know, of a baby came from. Isaiah is speaking to the king of Judah. And during that time, Ahaz was the king. And King Ahaz was a man who was evil in many ways. You know, he is great, great, his great grandfather, his father, they all worship God. They all believe in God, but when Ahaz became king, he really like, you know, went the other way. Even to the point that he sacrificed his own children to false God. You see that? There's a deviation. He was sick, he's twisted. In short, we can call him evil. Okay? Evil. Ahaz is an evil king. Nobody can compare with his evilness. So, that time... There were three empires, the Assyrian Empire, we have the Syria, and then we have the Israel. So the Assyrian Empire was steadily increasing in influence and power, and many of the nations of the region were scared about what would happen to them. Okay, The Assyrian Empire somewhere on the north part, and there's the Israel here, and there's the Syria over here, and then Ju Judah somewhere here in the south. And so these forces, okay, Syria and Israel wanted to form a coalition or they wanted to ally with Judah to oppose the growing power of the Assyrian. You see now, there are two kingdoms. They wanted to, you know, to join force so they can fight the Assyrian because Assyrian was very, very strong. It was like, you know, a giant, okay, giant. So what they did... The two empires here, uh, Israel and the Syria, they went to King Ahaz because Ahaz is ruling the um, kingdom of Judah. So they went there and they said, Ahaz, because the, uh, the Assyrian army, the Assyrian kingdom is growing so fast and big and we are afraid that if they're going to attack us, we will be defeated. Okay? But when Ahaz heard the you know, the uh, proposal of these two kingdoms, he didn't know what to do. Actually, he said, no, I'm not going to join forces with you. I'm not going to do that. But you know what he did? Because he did not join the two other nations, he bribed. He went now to the giant empire, to the Assyrian. He went there and he allied with the king of the Assyrian. Okay? So because of what he did, the Syria and Israel now, they turned against Ahaz and they said that we're going to crush you down. You don't want to join us. We're going to bring you down. That's what they said to Ahaz. And so they decided that they're going to punish him and they will get rid of him. Okay. So Syria and Israel wanted to put another king Okay. because Ahaz is not the game, you know, he's not part of the game anymore. He said that, they said that, well, we're going to crush you down and we're going to put a new king that will rule the Judah. So King Ahaz heard that Syria and Israel had turned against him and that really scared him, right? And because of that, he went to Assyria and made ally with them. And so when that thing happened, the prophet Isaiah came to Ahaz now. King Ahaz, okay? And he was there and he was sent by God to actually comfort him and to give him the message of hope. Message of hope, a message of comfort, and a message of protection. That was the, you know, that was the intention of Isaiah to coming to um, King Ahaz. And in chapter 12, it says there, Isaiah said to King Ahaz, King Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. Just ask Him. That's what 
Isaiah told him because God already mentioned do not fear because the Assyrian in the Israel even the Assyrian cannot conquer Judah there was already a word meaning the decree has already been released from God so it is already confirmed so Isaiah went to Ahaz and just you know comfort him and he was only asking one thing asked from the Lord but you know what Ahaz said he said I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test if you're going to read the script it seems like Isaiah is a very religious man no I'm not going to test the Lord I will not do that it sounds very religious isn't it but actually the literal meaning when he said no I'm not going to ask God it does mean that Ahaz does not trust the Lord and when you when he did that he was showing God that I can do it on my own without your help and sometimes we're like that we're like Ahaz we think that apart from God we can do anything apart from God with our wisdom with our intelligence with our good-looking face with our money with our power we can do anything because we think that we don't need God I don't need you but King you know but Isaiah said just asked for a sign it was just a sign and it doesn't matter if the sign that you ask from the Lord is impossible because with God nothing is impossible name it and he will give it to you but Ahaz with all his pride okay because he's king I'm king I'm rich I'm the most beautiful girl in the whole wide world <laughs> I'm the famous action star I'm the famous actor I'm the greatest singer nobody can beat me okay you tend to cling to yourself now and you think that I can make a way and I can do anything to make this Israel and Syria get down on my knees now you allies okay this is what this is what what King Ahaz was thinking now you allies oh, you're nothing I'm gonna go to a bigger one what he did he allied with the enemy instead of allying instead of you know he will ally to God that will give him total victory sure victory it's already a sure victory he did not do that he went to the enemy and you know when you do that making a treaty with an enemy will cost you more harm than good yes or no sometimes in the beginning it looks okay it looks fun oh Jed look at this I've got lots of money Jed look at this one I'm so famous look at this Jed it's only in the beginning but when it continues worst damage actually has been done the moment you start treating or making a treaty with your enemy made a treaty with your enemy you're already done you're gone so with his pride and stubbornness Ahaz refused and went on his way he trusted his own wisdom and decided to make a treaty with another nation later on when King Ahaz did that you know what happened the king of Assyria betrayed him that's the very sad part of the you know story yeah, at the beginning it was okay Assyrian was like providing probably providing army for him maybe food or gold and silver but the end whatever the Assyrian gave unto King Ahaz and the people there they took them back and they left nothing and this is what the enemy is trying to do with us he used the deceit lure you come to me come to me this is good this is nice I give you everything but the enemy I'm telling you that you do not I mean I'm not saying that we should fear um, you know we should fear Satan you remember our enemy is not people okay we're not fighting against blood and flesh okay it's the spirit against you know those people okay the enemy you know when brother Peter told me that the enemy has no mercy if they're going to get you down they're going to get you down and they're not just gonna you know let you like nothing they're going to leave you like kill you 
the last thing, if they could kill you, they, they will kill you. And this is what exactly happened to King Ahaz. So Ahaz refused to listen to the voice of God. And so for us, even though, right? Even though this is what Ahaz did to, to God. He was stubborn. He was prideful. He was, uh, you know, uh, proclaimed uh, his self-righteousness. Yet God did not withdraw his promise because of the one king's fault. Okay? Even if he did that, God still fulfilled his promise. Because the God that we serve is not a person that he changes his mind, that he changes his mind. When he say that he is going to do it, he's going to do it. And so, he said there that God was faithful to the remnant of those people in the nation of Judah. Some part in, you know, some people in Judah, they followed Ahaz, but some part of them, well, some of them, they did not follow Ahaz. They still believe in God. And that is where God was really, you know, delighted, okay? So those who were faithful to him, God released a promise. And this is a promise now in Matthew, right? That I'm going to send this baby. Who is this baby? Jesus, that I'm going to send this baby Jesus, regardless of whether Ahaz trusts me or fails me, this child will be born, a virgin will conceive, and his name will be Emmanuel. Sometimes, most of us here, we think that, well, Jed, I cannot undo my past anymore. And most of us here, we're like, well, Jed... It's just so hard. I have a very bad past. And, and even right now, my life is a mess. I don't know how to. I want to, but I just can't get out of this. You know what? It's not too late for you because God already sent his promise and he gave a sign. And that sign is already at your hand. It is within your reach. So that's the first one that God gave us, a sign. And the second one that God gave us is a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name what? Emmanuel. This son is no other than Jesus Christ. This is not Joseph Smith. <laughs> this is not other Jesus that they're claiming, I am Jesus. This is not Kibuloi in the Philippines, no. This is Jesus Christ. He was the child conceived of the Holy Spirit through a virgin woman called Mary, the virgin birth of the Messiah. You remember, can you remember John 3.16? What does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that is Jesus, okay? Jesus is the son birthed by Mary, so we can save, for what? From our sin. So regardless of your past, in your present, God sent Jesus for you and for me. So you don't think about that anymore. Jesus is available for you. And the third S that he gave us is a Savior. And it says there, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name, what? Jesus. For what? For he will save his people from their sin. So Jesus again, Jesus came. You know, um... When, when I lost my job five months ago, I was contemplating and I was really, really, um, you know, like praying to God. And uh, there was the song, I think my son really loves this song, the song like, um, the title of the song is Sparrow. Uh, it mentions in the song that the lilies in the water, they don't worry. The birds in the air, they don't worry. In short, that is Matthew 6:33 that God commanded us, do not worry, okay? Seek his kingdom first. And when I was praying, was um, a bit crying to God, it's like a voice telling me that, you know, Holy Spirit is impressing my heart. Jesus Christ did not come for the flowers. He did not come for the birds. He did not come for the lilies of the water. He came for you and for me, Okay? So you should remember your worth. Remember your worth. And when you're going through tough times, remember that God did not die on the cross so that you will be jobless, so that you're going to be miserable. 
God did not die there so you will live a life, you know, a miserable life. That's not, that's not, that's not the plan. The plan is for you to live an abundant life and for you to be a blessing to others so others will see the glory of God living in you. That's it. That's the one. So, you know, He came as a Savior to save us from our sin. Okay? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. We lost what we lost. We lost our authority. We lost the kingdom. Right? That's the, in Genesis. So Jesus came. He was wrapped in a cloth in a manger so that He can reestablish and re, we can regain the kingdom of God that was lost. And the last one that He gave us, okay? He gave us the Holy Spirit. And it says there, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may be abide with you forever. So as Jesus is the Savior from the guilt of sin, the Holy Spirit is the Savior who saved us from the power of sin by living through us. So now, we have the ability to say, no, I'm not going to do it. We have the ability to, yes, Lord, I can do it. Because the grace of God through His Holy Spirit is what? Living inside you and me. God is in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit will remind us of God's Word in our daily situations. So isn't that a good source of comfort? So if you feel like lonely again, if you feel like, I am a little bit depressed, Jed. <laughs> Don't be. The promise of Christmas is already where? Upon you. It's already there. It's already available. So, with the signs and wonders that God has given us, it is the truth of the gospel that God became human being in Jesus Christ and that God was faithful to His promises in sending the Messiah to His covenant people. We have a covenant God and we are His covenant people. What He says, He will do it. He will do it. He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. So remain faithful to Him because He has always been faithful. So, let's go now. I'm on already to the last part of my message. So, Jed, what is this about? The chapter, the Zaya chapter 7 and 14. So let's just summarize them. If there is no virgin birth, there is no hope. If Jesus was not born, there is no hope in the world no hope for you no hope for me jesus christ is the source of our living hope jesus is emmanuel god with us and we can never be alone okay this one you should think about this we can never be alone because god is with us all the time so don't think oh my boyfriend left me jed oh my husband left me jed or my no even if they leave you let them be why because god is with you your happiness does not depend on people it depends where to the lord right and the holy spirit is our helper and comforter the very presence of god that lives in us so our takeaway for today i don't know if you can read the screen but let's we can read it together the birth of Jesus Christ means hope and provides comfort. To who? To the person out of work, to the struggling single mother or father, to the dying believer, to the stubborn and doubtful, to the humble and repentant, and to the one who needs a new beginning. God wants us to live life with hope and assurance that all His promises will come true for us and that our future is firm, firmly and safely secure in His hand for our good. 
Christmas is a renewal of hope and a promise fulfilled by the covenant-keeping God to His covenant people, that's you and me. So, the application now. Amen? You go out of this church, don't you just, don't just let the information stick in your mind only here in the church. When you go out today, you're in your community, you're in your school, if you are a receiver, you don't have Jesus in your life, you don't know about Jesus, you don't know the reason for the season, I encourage you, receive the gift of God and start unboxing Jesus. If you are busy unboxing your iPhones, what else? Your new shoes, your new bags, start unboxing Jesus in your life. And if you are a giver, okay? This is for us now, covenant people. You and me sitting here right now, and even you watching me on uh, YouTube, Facebook. The greatest present or the greatest gift that you can give to others is not the most expensive gift that you can buy from the shop, but the miracle gift of Christmas, which is Jesus Christ, God with us. So I just want to you know, um, lead everybody in to a prayer. Thank you, Lord. And if you are watching right now or if you are here in the room or in the church and you've missed so many Christmas and you celebrate Christmas and you don't, you know, you didn't really know the, the reason for the celebration, how many Christmases have, have passed? Five Christmases? Four, three, two? Or been last year? Well, this is a perfect opportunity for you to really unbox the gift of Christmas. And if you want to experience this lovely gift, because he said that, it says in the word that Jesus brings comfort. He brings light, life. Light, life, salvation, and hope with the bonuses of love, joy, and peace. If that is you, do you want to experience that right now? I just want to ask you to pray this prayer with me because Jesus has been waiting for you. He's just like a present underneath the Christmas tree waiting for you. Your name is already in the gift. It was already there. All you have to do is claim that gift, receive that, and unbox what's inside it and the moment that you unbox it that is already a seal that you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior that gift belongs to you it's yours to receive because in Christ as you said there's no condemnation he doesn't he doesn't you know when you come to him he will not say oh you have this past and he's going to retaliate your past. He's not going to do that. He's a merciful God. He's waiting for you to come to him. Just humbly come. Surrender everything to him. Your past, your present, even your future. He knows. Why? Because he loves you. He remembers you. He came for you he did not die for other things he died for you he came for you that's how special you are and that's how significant you are to him doesn't matter if you're not if you don't feel you're significant to your mom to your dad to your friends to the people around you to your boss doesn't matter if they don't see you you gave your whole effort but you seems like you, you seem like uh, just a small dot for them you matter to God. You matter to Jesus. So let just, let's, let's just pray this prayer and receive Jesus. Lord, so many Christmases have passed and I really did not understand the real meaning why you came here on earth. Lord, today, I just want to open up my heart to you. Look inside my heart, Lord. Because you're the only person who knows everything. And I, I cannot hide anything from you, God. 
cannot. You know my past, you know my present, and you even know my future. I just want to ask you, Jesus, to come into my life. I take you as my Lord and my Savior. I have done so many wrongs from my past. If I'm going to remember them, they're degrading. I don't want even to remember them, but I want to exchange them with your forgiveness and your love and your mercy. Because from this day on, I receive you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you came on earth, you died for me, and you came back to heaven because you loved me. You loved me. And I thank you, God, that from this day on, you will help me to know you to love you, to serve you, to walk with you through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Jesus, that I'm walking away from my past and I'm walking towards you. Help me, Lord, to be a better person because I know that I am a new creation. There's no condemnation. I am a new person. Thank you, Lord that you have already laid down your plans in my life. And help me, God, that every single day, I'll remember Jesus, my Emmanuel, God is with me. Thank you for comfort. And for us, church, I just want to pray for everybody. Lord God, you're amazing. You're amazing, Jesus. And thank you for the incredible gift of Christmas. And we pray that as the season, as the uh, Christmas day is approaching, God, we will not indulge ourselves, Lord, in, you know, in not only in partying, in, in drinking, in, you know, uh, merrymaking, Lord, but we will remember the true meaning of Christmas. Help us, Father, that every single day while Christmas is approaching, in our hearts, God, we will remember and we will share you to other people. Share your goodness, the hope that you've given us, the comfort that you send us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that without you, without your guidance, your, 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 your leading, without you teaching us what to do, we can never, ever live a life of Christmas every day. Christmas is not only in December, but it is every day that we live for. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us and everything that you will be doing in advance. We just want to praise you, Lord, and love you, Lord, and glorify you because you deserve to be praised, to be glorified. In Jesus' name we declare, amen and amen. Only celebrate because God is with us. You know, sometimes we get caught up in the commercialism of Christmas, and it's understandable. The gifts, the bright lights, the food that surrounds the festive season, it's, it's, it can be related to by not just one of us, but by all of us. So today, refocus. Refocus your hearts and remember why we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Emmanuel, the Son of God, the flesh that will redeem you and removes the yoke of sin and slavery from your shoulders. You know, during the modern time, we face many worldly things that distract us from the original message 
that Jed reminded us of today and the real meaning. Take a moment this week and read the scriptures about Christmas and the birth of Jesus. In Isaiah 7, Isaiah 9, Matthew, Luke, John, they're there. God provided them to us to be reminded of the real meaning why Jesus came. During this week, when you're reading the scriptures, sing Christmas hymns, not Christmas songs, Christmas hymns. Focus on the words as you sing them with your family or sing them on your own during your quiet time, during your devotional time. These are the things that will truly bring you to the reality of what Christmas really means. If you're here today and you need prayer for healing, for salvation, for provisions, come up front after the service. We have intercessors that want to pray with you and for you. Don't be afraid. It's not judgment. We want to pray for you, for the things that are on your heart that you want to release. Just come and be prayed for. If you're watching us today on Facebook or YouTube, message us. We'll get back to you. We want to pray for you as well. Give us that opportunity. Release the things from your heart and let us pray with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord continue to give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be safe this week. Be careful. See you next week. God bless.